Hey, Cal, this is it. This is Melody Mason. Where? Where? There in front of him. Look around at the station sign. Well, point your finger. I can't go but where you're looking. Melody Mason. Hey, Lefty, wake up, Frank. This is where we elude. You mean a light. A loot means to get hold of some money. Well, my brother Walt's running the barn dance show down here, and I figure he's got so much money saved up that he's laughing at the men. Think he'll loot you with some of it? He's my brother, ain't he? Let's find your brother, brother, because we sure are stranded. Well, let's get going. My brother's at the Henshaw Ranch. Hey, fellas, look. There's my brother Walt's picture. Well, what do you guys make of this? I reckon Walt must have done some looting himself. Looks like he's hiding from the men instead of laughing at it. <laughs> what next will those kids think of? Taking a nice fellow like Walt from and making a wanted man out of him. Do you know Walt? Do I know him? He's my best friend. Yeah? I'm going to clear his name right now, too, by cracking. He's got a sense of humor, ain't he, fellas? Got a sense of judgment, too. Yeah? I judge you to be Walt's brother, be not you? How do you know that? Oh, shucks. Anybody can tell from the looks of you, you and Walt is cast in the same mold. And I reckon you'd be a bit moldier. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fella! How about getting a little... Uh, how, how do you jug there, huh? That ain't no jug. That's a musical instrument. Musical instrument? You mean sure. you play music on that thing? Sure. What's the name of it? A jug. <laughs> you could have fooled me. I thought it was a jug. <laughs> Which way is the Henshaw Ranch? That away. This away? Okay, boys, let's go. Hey, Walt, you ain't leaving, too. Nope, just giving up my room to that old maid aunt that's coming. You leaving that picture of yarn on the wall for hit a moon over? Shucks, no. That comes down. There's a picture of the spirit of 76. I'll give her that instead. She can have a choice of three men, then. One with the fife, one with the drum, and the one with the headache. <laughs> hey, not so loud, not so loud, Hash. If Mark catches you out of that kitchen, there'll be the devil to pay. Oh, I got no one to cook for in the kitchen now. Most of the cow has quit since Mark is bossing the ranch. Well, maybe things will be changed after that old maid aunt gets here. She's Mark's sister, you know. What can a woman do against a mean, drunken coyote like Mark Simmons? She may have the law on her side, while Mark's just forcing things to suit his own rotten purpose. I wish I was out of this mess. Can't you put me in your show, Walt? What could you do on the stage? Well, I've been sort of reading and practicing up on better local work. Better local? What kind of entertainment is that? Oh, you seen them fellas that talk like other people without moving their lips? Oh, you mean ventriloquism? Yeah. Oh, what a beautiful room. It sure is, ma'am, and it's all... Well, who was that? That was me, throwing my voice. Well, do me a favor, Hash. Shut the door and leave yourself on the outside. Doggone it. Canned on my first audition. Maybe it can be another Charlie McCarthy. Hash, I picked up Jimmy's aunt at the station. Jimmy didn't show up. Thanks, Pappy. Guys, you sure make an old fella feel like a boy. <laughs> All right, boy, take my baggage to my room. I'm glad to meet you, Jimmy's aunt. Oh, I'm not Jimmy's aunt. She's Jimmy's aunt, and I'm her aunt. I'm a monkey's uncle. Then let's start from scratch. This is Alta Lee, and I'm Matilda Simmons. They call me Maddie for short. My name is Hash Brown. That's short enough. Glad to know you, Hash. Would you like to show us where our room is? Sure thing. It's about ready for you. 
That is, except maybe the picture of 1776. What? No pinup boys or movie stars? Ah. <laughs> your baggage is in front of the door. I reckon I'll tell your brother Mark I see you when I see him. Please don't. That is, I'd like to surprise him. <laughs> well, I'm not one to mix in family affairs. That's a good boy. Come, come, be a boy, old man. Can't you let Pappy die happy? Come in. Oh, what a beautiful room. I thought I told you to quit kidding, Hash. I gotta get this room cleaned up. After all, she's gonna be our new boss, even though she is an old bag. Uh-oh. Looking for something, miss? I'm looking for my room. I was told this is it. There must be some mistake. This room is reserved for a Miss Simmons. I'm Matilda Simmons. I'm a cook pigeon. That's nothing. A moment ago, I was an old bag. Well, ma'am, in your case, I wouldn't mind holding the bag. Wouldn't you? Then I'll give you three bags to hold. They're out in the hall. Will you fetch them, please? With pleasure. You and your venter local. Hey, mister. You fellas just coming off the last train? What's it to you, son? I was supposed to meet my aunt, but I must have missed her. I was wondering if and she was on it or if and she wasn't. Sorry, son, there wasn't no females on the car we was in. What does your aunt look like, anyway? I don't know. I never seen her. What's an aunt supposed to look like, anyhow? Well, that all depends. Some aunts are powerful pretty, and some are safe any place. What's her name? I only know her by the name of Matilda. Uh-oh, sounds like a safe name, don't it, boys? Yeah. yeah. Don't you know her last name? It would be the same as yours if she was an old maid, aunt. Well, my name's Jimmy Henshaw, but she's my mother's sister. You must be Carl Henshaw's boy. We're on our way up the Henshaw Ranch now. Yeah, and if you're heading home, and if you don't mind, we'd be much obliged if you gave us a hitch. Come right ahead. It's a nice piece of luck running into you, Jimmy. My name's Cal Shrum. You must be Walt's brother. Yeah. Walt wrote me all about how nice your father is to him. He was nice to everyone. Was nice? You don't mean... Yeah, a couple of days ago. How did it happen? I don't know. He left the ranch strong and healthy, and the next thing we heard, he fell off his horse, and when we found him, he was dead. Kind of funny, a good cattleman like your father falling off a horse. That's what I say, but nobody pays any attention to me, especially my Uncle Mark. You talk like you've got ideas. I sure have, and I'm not telling to nobody except Brad, our marshal. He's my pal. How come you haven't told him up to now? Brad's been away on a rodeo contest, but he's expected back today. Well, you can tell your pal Brad if he needs any help, he can count on me and the boys. That's fine, but Brad never seems to need any help. Get for home, Mercury. Nice piece of earth, that Henshaw ranch. It sure is, Slade. And when that's combined with my own ranch, it's going to make me the wealthiest cattleman in the country. That hadn't ought to be hard now that old Henshaw's out of the way. No, it shouldn't. Well, that depends on the testimony you boys give in court. Now, look. You all actually heard Carl Henshaw tell me that I'd be the guardian of his son if anything happened to him. Did we? Well, didn't you? Oh, suppose the court wants that in writing, Mark. There ain't nothing in writing, I tell you. I looked all over for it. The law will have to take our word for it. And if they don't? Then we make our own laws. I want that Henshaw rent.
Mark, we're in trouble. Did you find that rope? No, Brad came riding up, so I beat it. Yeah, did he see you? I don't think so, but I lost my hat. Well, if he finds it, it's gonna be just too bad for you. Maybe I better clear out. Oh, yeah. So you want to clear out, huh? Well, here's your cradle. Mark, here comes the marshal. All right, you and Dirk get out of here. I know how to handle him. Things happening around here, Mark, and I've got to keep a clear head. Yeah, well, don't mind us. We are feeling kind of low because of poor Carl Henshaw. Yeah. You boys didn't have any love for him when he was alive. What kind of sorrow are you trying to drown? Well, Carl and me, we had a little differences, but they didn't amount to anything. Besides, I, I got a boy to take care of. I'm his closest in kin. Yeah, I will know closer than your sister. Well, she ain't liable to come down here for the mere sake of a boy. Say, for your information, she's at the Henshaw Ranch right now. Well, if she is, it's news to me. <laughs> what kind of news? Good or bad? What do you mean by that? I mean, she's got something in writing, and I'm thinking you've got a fight on your hands. Yeah, well, don't you bother about me. I'll make out. Well, make out this hat. It's initial MC. Any of your men fitted? Well, uh, it could be my crow. Yeah? How come he wasn't hurry enough not to pick up a Stetson when it blew off his head? Brad, look. There's my crow right there. You can see for yourself. His head is so drunk, it couldn't feel his hat blowing off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Well, when he sobers up, tell him I brought back his hat and... Ask him what's his hurry. Hey, Slade. There. I want you to run over to the Henshaw Ranch and sort of tramp around and see what kind of information you can pick up. Maybe they'll hire me. They're short-handed, anyhow. Sure they will. We chased off all their hands by sniping at them. Well, just don't do any sniping while I'm down there. Yeah, well, don't worry about that. Hey, Walt. Oh, Walt. Come see what I brought you. Brought me? Yes, your brother Cal is here. My brother Cal? Thanks, Jimmy. I got a surprise for you, too. Your aunt's here. She's in my room. Oh, boy. Her I gotta see. Howdy, stranger. Sure. Howdy, Walt. Talks millionaireish anyway. Greets his brother and disowns him at the same time. Don't mind these hombres. I told him you had so much money, you'll laugh at the men. Shucks, I couldn't even snicker to piggy bank. Well, sorry to hear that. We're up against it. Thought you could give us a handout. We're hungry. I am. Well, I can fix that all right with Hash the Cook. Let's go to the kitchen and see what's cooking. How about sleeping? Got any rooms? Rooms? What do you want it, with or without? With if I can. I sure could use a bath. Boy, are you telling me? I don't know about rooms, but uh, maybe I could hide you in the bunks the ranch hands slept in. Slept in? Why aren't they sleeping in them now? They all quit for some mysterious reason. Well, maybe we can stick around and help you solve the mystery for our room and board. Well, I can ride a horse. I can shoot straight. I can milk cows. You can. You hammerhead one look at you and the cow squirt sour cream. Well, I'll talk to the boss. She's new around here, but I think I stand in with her. Hello, Brad. When would you get back? Well, just got back. Won myself a prize down at the rodeo. Uh, champion cowboy, eh? That's right. <laughs> well, glad you're back. A lot of things been happening since you've been gone. Yeah? Oh, meet my brother Cal and the boys. Glad to know you, Cal. How are you, Brent? Howdy, boy. They're, They're figuring they... on staying. We could use some new faces around these parts. Well, if you mean what I think you mean, we'd be glad to help. Well, I think you can. 
I'm going to get washed up and get myself something to eat. Mind if I use your room, Walt? No, go right ahead. I want to sneak the boys in the kitchen anyway. <laughs> Tell Hash to whip me up one of them double-decker ham sandwiches. Okay. Don't worry, Jimmy. Everything will work out all right. I'm sure glad you came to take charge, Aunt Manny. Uncle Mark doesn't like me, and I know it. Why, Jimmy, what makes you say a thing like that? I could say a lot more, but you're his sister. Besides, I want to tell Brad first. He'll tell me right from wrong. Well, you don't have to tell me what's wrong, Jimmy, but you can tell me this. Is there something wrong? Plenty. Oh, sorry, ma'am. I thought this was Walt's room. He was good enough to give it up to me. Hello, Brad. Boy, am I glad to see you. Come in, Mr. Brad. Jimmy's told me so much about you, I almost imagine I know the brand of your shaving soap. <laughs> Just plain old ordinary laundry soap. Brad, this is my Aunt Matilda. Your Aunt what? What's the matter, Brad? The price you ain't the kind that's safe any place? Jimmy. <laughs> well, we sort of expected Jimmy's aunt to look a little more mature. You mean you expected an old bag and got a new one. <laughs> well, there's really nothing baggy about oh you, Oh, boy. To Brad, the champion cowboy. Well, I'm going to go get something to eat right now, Brad, but don't go away without seeing me. I got something private to tell you. What can you tell me, Jimmy, that your own aunt can't hear? It's not that I don't trust her. I do. But I want to tell you first. Then if you want to tell her, okay. Okay, Jimmy. That's something nice to pass on to your grandchildren. <laughs> well, you've got to have children to have grandchildren. And to have those, you've got to have a wife. Oh? Is that so hard to get? Well, harder to get than a prize like this, I guess, and I almost lost my life getting this one. Mm-hmm. Some men would risk their lives for a prize, where they wouldn't for a woman. Well, I would, if she were the right woman. Do you think you know enough about women to judge the right one? I think so. By the way, I think I know a little woman that could stand some risk and done. Can she count on you? She sure can, ma'am. Don't call me ma'am, Brad. Call me Matty. It won't make me feel so friendless. You got yourself a friend, Matty. My doggies, the food is sure good here, plentiful. I'm gonna like it around here. Only the food? Well, the scenery's not bad either. Not bad? On second thought, very good. Plentiful, too. You ain't just a kid and my favorite scenery. I'll bet you've been looking at plenty of scenery with all your traveling around. Now, honey, it appears to me that... Tough these days. My meat ain't never tough. I'm fixing this life with a tough body gang. If they come around looking for trouble, I knew hands off. Well, they were in a pretty bad mood the last time I saw them, and a drinking, too. I wish you'd hang around, Brad. Well, I sort of aim to. You see, I got something now to uphold besides the law. Yeah, she's a heap prettier than the marshal's badge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shucks, I never could keep anything from you, Eddie. That fat fella wants another rice foot. Don't forget what I told you, Brad. Sure is a hungry bunch. That fat fella had two plates of roast beef, five helpings of mashed potatoes, three rice puddings, and four cups of coffee, not to mention three bowls of soup. <laughs> that almost sounds inhuman, eh? Sure it is. I told him if he took one more bite, he'd bust. And you know what he said? No. Bring me a steak and get out of the way. Come on, I'll fix you up. <laughs> Just one big happy family? That's right. Mind if I join you? Oh, ma'am. It's mighty nice of you, Miss Maddie, to be eating at the same table with your help. I don't believe in discrimination. We're all going to work hard, make lots of money, and have lots of fun. Hooray for our new boss! Hooray for our new boss! <laughs> Who said she was your new boss? This is no time for us to discuss our family affairs. I've got nothing to say to you. Sneaking up here without even letting your brother know. Things happen too fast here for me to let you know. Well, I'm telling you right now. I'm boss around here. I've got the rights to this ranch and Jimmy's guardianship. Fine guardian you'd make. Drinking all the time, surrounding yourself with a bunch of ruffians. Yeah, well, it takes men of this kind to make a go of it around here. Where do you think you're gonna get with these tents? Hey! 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 All right, what's going on around here?
here. Well, I... I just ducked in to inform my loving sister that Jimmy's guardianship belongs to me. Yeah, well, did the law say so? No, but I'll see that it will. Well, until such time that it does, you better clear out. You ain't by any chance trying to impress my pretty sister, are you? Say, Mark, this is one time you're being drunk safe your trouble instead of getting into it. I'll get out of here before I get sore and throw you out. Jimmy, what's the big secret? Well, I was down at the wood patch where my father had the accident. And I found a rope tied between two trees about five yards apart. You mean you think somebody fouled your dad's horse? They might have known he was going in that direction and put that rope there on purpose. Well, I don't know who'd do a thing like that to your father, Jimmy. And it might be hard to find out who that who is. That is, without having the rope to go by. But I've got the rope. You have? Well, give it to me. Well, I haven't got it here. I buried it down at the wood patch where nobody can find it but me. I'll tell you what you do, Jim. Take the buckboard and go down to Woodpatch and fetch it for me. I'll stick around here. I'm expecting some more trouble. Okay. Wait a minute. Did you say down by the Woodpatch? Yeah. Seems to me that's where I saw Mike Crow nosing around. Maybe you better have one of the boys go with you. Well, let me take Ace. He's the biggest. All right, Jimmy. We're in trouble. Kid knows where the rope's at. He just went down to wood patch to get it for Brad. Slade, take some of the men and get back down there. Try to stop that kid. But if he's found it already, start shooting. Maybe he'll drop it and run off. No matter what happens, I want that rope. And if I don't get it back, I'm going to hang you with what's left of it. Now beat it. What's all the shooting about? I got the rope, but somebody shot at us, and when they heard you coming, they ran away. Took off, huh? Well, go on back to the ranch, Jimmy. I want to take a look around. We're in trouble. We didn't get that rope. We nearly had it. Brad came from nowhere and upset our plans. I made sure he didn't see us, though. Well, good. I guess you used your head that time, all right. Get back to the Henshaw Ranch and see if you can get it that way. Whatever happens, I want that rope before Brad finds out who bought it and where it was bought. Here. Don't get too close to me. I ain't supposed to know you. Now look, you ain't left this place for two hours, understand? Yeah. All right, get yourself a drink. Has your gun been fired? Give it to me. Come on. What is this, a hold up? No. But this gun says if anybody comes in here and asks you how long we've been here, you say two hours, Savvy? Yeah, sure, sure. I'm back again, Doc. <clears throat> Doing a little celebrating. I'm buying a drink for these strangers. Uh, yeah. There's 
awful good prune juice, partner. Good luck to you. Hey, you men look a little hungry. What about some food? Oh, the dining room does look inviting. And mighty private, too. Shucks, come on, let's see what they got. Sit right down here, gentlemen. Sit there, sir. Well, what have we got to eat? Good looking. Baloney. You're too pretty to work in here. Why not join up with me? I'm smart. Cat's brain. She don't want you. She wants me. I've got pig's feet. <laughs> <laughs> well, looks like we've got settled for just plain food. Any ache? I should have. You've been laying them ever since you came in. <laughs> <laughs> look who we have with us. Old man Henshaw. Don't he look natural? He sure does. Watch me lay another ring while I knock his false teeth down his throat. What's all the shooting about? Oh, just having a little fun with Doc. How come poor Carl Henshaw's in on the fun? Some of my shots must have gone wild. You're about the orneriest cuss I ever ran across. Yeah, I'd make a messy brother-in-law, wouldn't I? Say, don't seem quite right to hit a man when he's drinking. Oh, he's always drunk. Sober him up and I'll work him over good. By the way, what's it to you? You fellas working for him? Don't even know the man. How long you been here? Oh, a couple of hours. That right, Doc? About that. Let me see that gun. Well, don't look like it's been fired. And see that it ain't. Mighty nice of you to put the boys to work, Miss Maddie. It's a fair exchange. The boys need the work, and we're short of hands. Howdy, strangers. Howdy. Did you tell me who does the hiring around here? This lady's the boss, if that's what you mean. Looking for work? Needed badly, ma'am. All right. Walt will give you your orders. The kitchen's over there if you're hungry. Thank you, ma'am. I want to see how Carl's horse is coming along. Well, be careful how you touch him. His leg's a little sore yet. Aunt Maddie. Aunt Maddie. I want you to put this rope in my dad's trunk. It may be important evidence. Brad will tell you about it later. All right, Jimmy. And Aunt Maddie, are you married? A boy should wash his face before proposing to a girl. But I ain't proposing for me. No? Oh. I thought Brad fights his own battles. He does, mostly. And wins them, too. Howdy, boys. Guess I'd be one of you, considering the lady boys just hired me today. Well, pull up a piece of ground and sit down. Hey, what you got in that bundle, mister? Oh, that's, uh, personal things. A lot of fishing paraphernalia. Fishing around here? Sure there is. Fine, I like fishing. What kind do you catch down here? Well, we got a fish that's a species of the pastrami gender, crossed with a one-eyed fried herring. I never heard of that. What kind is that? Uh, iffle diffle. Iffle diffle? What kind of a fish is that? It's a fish that swims backwards. Swims backwards? Why does it swim backwards? To keep the water from getting into its eyes. I thought you said it only had one eye. Well, the female has the eye on the right side and the male on the left. That's why they swim together, side by side. Well, do they swim on the side where they can make eye at each other, or do they swim on the side where one eye don't know what the other one's doing? Depends on how the female feels about it. With fishes, too? Guess so. Well, what kind of bait do you use for a nipple dipple? Chunks of seal. I heard a seal eating fish, but never fish eating seal. 
I guess it's a case of every dog has his day. What's that got to do with it? Uh, Iffle Diffle's a dogfish. Is it a hard fish to catch? You only catch them a certain time of the year. What time is that? About half past two. Half past two what? Half past two in the summertime. Is that when you caught yours? I caught mine in December. December? I thought it was the summer before. The summer before, I wasn't here. Look, all I want to know is how you catch them Iffle Diffles. Well, you sneak up on them from behind, grab them by the tails and pull them ashore. Then they start blaming each other for their capture and knock themselves cold. Then, when they start panting heavily, you reach in, pull out their breath, and pour it in a can. Pour it in a can? Yes, yeah, you use it for a fish sauce. Oh, is it an eating fish? Is it an eating fish? It's delicious, but you have to know how to cook them. Cook them? I don't suppose you can bark them. No, they gotta be cooked. Cook, well, how do you cook them? Well, first you take a thick plank board. Then you take some of the breast in the can and mix it into a heavy glue. And you slap the fish on the board, cover it with glue, so it'll stay there. Then you shove the whole thing in a red hot oven and let it stew in its own glue for 16 hours. 16 hours? Yeah. Why, then it's done nice and brown. And you pull the whole thing out, scrape the glue off the fish, throw the fish away, and eat the board. It's the finest thing you ever tasted. <laughs> <laughs> you ever <laughs> You sure can have a lot of fun in this little town. I'm beginning to like it around here. Figured on staying, cowboy? Well, that all depends. Depends on what? Well, uh, uh... Uh, how about you and me uh, uh, going to the barn dance Saturday night? Are you going to sing? Well, I guess so. Walt told me maybe you was going to sing a song. Maybe I will. Maybe you'll go? Maybe I'll sing if I go. Riding down the trail, shadows that you wrote, you know, at the uh, Dream Ranch in the Sky. <laughs> All right, Walt, how about having the boys help me? Sure.
to attend to, Maddie. You promised to share Jimmy's secret with me. Now you're trying to keep it from me. <laughs> I wouldn't keep anything from you, Maddie. Must be something, or Jimmy wouldn't have given me that rope to keep in the trunk for evidence. What evidence, Brad? Well, if you must know, Carl Henshaw didn't fall off of that horse by accident like you heard. You mean... I mean his horse was fouled by that rope. And I've checked on who bought the rope and where the rope was bought, and it adds up to the Simmons Ranch. But some of Mark's men might have done it without Mark knowing about it. Still, an employer is responsible for the acts of his employees. You don't know what you're saying, Brad. That would involve Mark in murder. And Mark is my brother. I'm sworn to uphold the law. But what good will that do? Carl is gone. Taking a life won't bring his back. I don't make the laws, Maddie. I just enforce them. But I thought in my case, in our I case... I know what you're trying to tell me, Maddie, but outside of going easy on Mark, I uphold the law. In that case, we have nothing more to say to each other. Good night, Brad. Well, Prado, it looks like our problem's getting deeper and deeper. that rope locked up in the trunk, Mark. If you could tell me where that trunk's located, I could get that rope. Uh, that's too risky. What about bringing the trunk to the hideout? We can blast it open here. Well, we could do that, but it's still too risky. Not if I go along. All right, you take Dirk and a couple of the men and get over to the Henshaw Ranch. Whatever happens, I want that rope. Men, we'll take the back road so they don't hear us coming. And by the way, you better get in on this, too. Get up the rest of the boys here and follow us. Maybe you're right. Now, we'll give them a head start, and then we'll tear out after them. Jimmy, here's a list of the stuff I want from the store. Better take somebody with you. Dirk said he wanted to go. Okay. Okay, Hank. Hey, boy, I'll take that Palomino over there, Walt. That's a dandy. Wait till you see me Godiva on that. Godiva on that? Oh, no, you don't. That Palomino's my horse, and I don't want nobody messing with him. Oh. You take that black one over there. Oh, Walt, that Palomino's a pretty one. I want that one. I can do tricks on that Palomino. Uh, there you go, just like when we was kids. Every time I got something, you always wanted. Ain't you ever going to be a gentleman? Oh, I'm as much a gentleman as you are. No, you ain't either. Now, if I was in your place and I had two horses, a Palomino and a black one, well, I'd give you the Palomino and I'd take the black one. Well, you got the black one. What are you squawking about? I'll take the Palomino. Get down off that wagon. I will not, neither. <laughs> he won't give us no more trouble for a while. You and Mike, do as Mark told you, and I'll stay here and watch it here. Don't make a sound if you know what's good for you. What's the meaning of this? I want that rope that's in that trunk. In a way, I'm doing you a favor. If that rope ever gets into court, it's gonna be too bad for your brother. How do I know you're not doing this to shield your own hide? My lawyer told me not to answer any questions. Now, do I get that rope, or do I give you trouble? I don't have the key. You know I'm new here. If you want that rope, you'll have to shoot the lock off. It's one way of whistling for Brad. I ain't falling for that. I'll shoot that lock off all right, but not in here. Now get on over there and get yourself tied up. With pleasure.
Howdy, boys. Hiya, Brad. Hey, Brad, the Simmons gang stole Jimmy's cot and they got away with the trunk. Yeah? Huh? Well, this is it, man. off here and let the kid go on. Jeff Brad will follow the wagon. You stand guard back there. Pull up that gag, let him yell. We'll fix Brad the same as we did old man Henshaw. Get for home, Mercury. You aren't hurt as bad as you pretend to be. Now get out. I'm staying right here. Brad will be gunning for me all over town. I reckon your room is the last place he'd expect to find me. Brad's liable to want to talk to me when he gets back. What'll I do with you then? He ain't liable to break in the lady's room without knocking. Or is he? I ought to turn you over to Brad for that. Yeah, but you won't. Because you know Brad's trying to pin a murder on me. And you don't like the idea of a hanging smeared all over your family tree. If you have a hanging coming to you, Brad will see that you get it if I know Brad. And if you know your family tree, You'll know that Brad will never live to do it. If you ever harm Brad, I swear I'll kill you myself. It's Jimmy's horse come back. Let the kid have his horse and cart. Probably served my purpose already. Jimmy's in the buckboard and so is the trunk. What? That means Brad's back. Now get out. No, I think I'll take a little nap under the bed. Aunt Maddie, help me. What happened, Jimmy? That tramp fella. He tied me up and everything. But Brad got everything back. You should have seen Brad. Don't get excited, Jimmy. You better wash up. I'll fix you something to eat. The boys have come back. Wow, that rope must be made out of iron, the way this trunk feels. You hammerhead. Whew. It was the tramp, ma'am. I know it was. My doggies was is right.
I have a search warrant to inspect that trunk. Do I enforce it, or do you open it willingly? The rope isn't in the trunk, Brad. I hid it somewhere else, but that tramp found it and took it away with him. Does that mean you refuse to open the trunk, ma'am? Brad, please don't hurt me anymore. I tell you the rope isn't in the trunk. Brad, I got a key to that trunk. Have you, Jimmy? Well, open it up. I want to see if the rope in there matches up with this. He's right, Brad. It isn't here. I might have known something like this would happen. I'm going to have to arrest you for obstructing the law. Don't you touch me, Brad. I hate you. Do you hear me? I hate you. Well, I was sort of hoping you wouldn't, but I'm sworn to uphold the law. You think you're smart because you're standing behind the badge of the law. Well, this is what I think of your law, and this is what I think of your badge. gun down, Mark. Put my sister down or I'll put you down. Get out of here before you get hurt. Nobody's going to get hurt around here, Mark. And I'm coming to get you. Don't, Brad. He'll kill you. I know he will. Get over there, both of you. All right, hurry up. your hands up. All the way up. So that's it. Brad, I lied to you when I said the tramp took it. But I didn't give it to Mark. You must believe me. Mark must have wanted this rope awful bad to want to kill a man for it. That rope is circumstantial evidence. You've got to have witnesses to convict a man. I got one. He's in a good place. Same place you're going to be in about 15 minutes. In 15 minutes, I'll be out. Search him, Walt. I hope he makes a false move. He's clean, Brad. I don't want anything to happen around here in front of your sister. Suppose we take a little ride. I want to take you to a place where we can talk things over in private. Now, come on. So long, sis. I'll see you soon. I'm sorry, Maddie, but I'm... Sworn to uphold the law. Let's get out of here. big surprise for you. Probably most of you folks have heard of Cal, that famous brother of mine. Well, we have him right here with us tonight, so I think with a little encouragement, we might get him to sing a song. How about it? Come on, Cal. Well, Walt, you know, Alta was telling me that uh, you were going to let her sing a song tonight, so what do you say we have her come up here and sing a song first? That's a good deal. Come on, Alta. Yes, sir, neighbors, right here she is. Oh, that's 
things I've done to you I didn't mean to do Forgive me, I'm human, same as you It seemed to be your goal To break my heart and soul Remember, I'm human, same as you I know this is the end for you and me But if you have to go I still want you to know Remember, I'm human, same as you Our love will never mend So why must we pretend I know this is the end for you and me But if you have to go I still want you to know Remember, I'm human, same as you Say, hey, that is fine, Cal yeah, well, thanks. Boy, you're doing all right, ain't you? Yeah, I was, till you horned in, you hammerhead. <laughs> Folks, you all know Jimmy Henshaw. Well, he's been kind of rehearsing with us out at the ranch and learned a new number. So what do you say we get him to sing it for us? Come on, Jimmy. Sun bonnet girl, there's stardust in your eyes. Sun bonnet girl, our love will never die You'll always be Just like the flowers in May Sun bonnet girl What more can I say We used to stroll along Happy as could be Through lover's lane You'd say sweet things to me I'll always hold Town must be in there now. Yeah, this would be a good time to take care of that deal for Mark. Where are the rest of the boys? Right where you told them to be. Have they got an extra gun and a horse for Mark? Everything's all taken care of, Slim. Then let's get out of here while Brad's interested in the show. I'll always hold and keep you in my heart. Sun bonnet girl will never... You've got to protect me, Brad. They're going to do me in. They're going to do you in? How'd you get out? Mark, he broke out of jail. Mark, w weren't you in the same cell with him? Yeah, but I got away. You got to help me. Hey, if this man's story is true, then our citizens aren't safe. With the likes of Mark Simmons running wild. That's bad policing, Brad. Well, my job is to bring the lawless to jail. If you citizens in this community can't afford a better to keep them there, it's not my fault. That's beside the point. Gentlemen, Mark Simmons is feeding havoc at this very moment, and what are we doing about it? Well, you citizens have a posse of your own. If you'd volunteer, you could put those lawbreakers where they belong. What do you say, citizen? Brad is right. We owe it to him and should help him. Let's go. Go on. Take care of him. Let's go.
call, Matty. As 